Good evening, everyone. Good evening, teacher. Okay, we are starting week number four, and this is the last week of this course. So we are going to complete this course in, we can say three more days. So we are going to begin with the session number one of this week number four, uh, because we are almost ending uh, my microphone or your microphone? Oh, your microphone. Okay, don't worry. You can write on the chat uh, when you want to say something. Don't worry. Okay. So we are going to start the session. And remember that in the last session that we were um, working on the last week, we were talking about simple past because we were talking about some tenses that we are going to use in English um, to create sentences and also to create a conversation. Um, right now is kind of raining here, so you will, I mean, I don't know if you can hear some kind of sounds, but it is not like something really bad. So in the last week, we were talking about a simple past and also we were talking about another tense because we have that kind of tenses that it was the present perfect. Uh, we were explaining all of the elements that we need to know about the uh, uh, present perfect. And also we were talking about the elements about simple past, but also we are going to talk about some other things that we know that we need to know about the simple uh, past because we have a, a, some tips. And also we are going to see a, adverb placement in this kind of sentence. We are going to talk about uh, active and, pa and passive voice. But in this case, we are not like uh, entering and learning all the information that we need to know about the uh, active and passive voice because we are just going to see uh, how can we use this tool for the simple past. Then after we complete all the information that we have about this stance, we are going to have some exercises. We are going to have two reading exercises in which you are going to read something. And uh, in one of these readings, you are going to complete, you are going to use the correct form of the verb because we are talking about um, simple past. So in this case, you are going to use the verbs in past. And in the other reading, also you are going to um, find the correct uh, way in which you are going to use the verbs, but also we are going to have some questions about the reading. So we have some exercises for the end of this session number one of the week number four. So we are going to begin. I need to uh, share the screen with you because we are going to read the sentence or the phrase that we have for this week. Remember that I like to share this kind of um, phrases with you because it can motivate you during the, the week. So we are going to see the phrase that we have here. So I need to move this one. So we have the phrase and it says, perfection is a road, not a destination. Every time I leave, I get an education. So in this case, it's talking about that uh, we are not going to see a perfection as the ending of all our uh, work. In this case, we are going to see the, uh, the path, the road, um, the things that we are doing through this process. 
because in this case, we are not going to end our uh, actions or we are not uh, stop learning when we are achieving some of our goals. Remember that we have some, a lot of things that we wanted to do and we have a long time to perform all of the actions. So uh, the perfection is in the role. You need to um, enjoy all the process. We know that sometimes we have bad things or um, we have bad moments, but that is part of the process. So you are not uh, going to, to say it is all for me because I don't want to continue with uh, this uh, situation. You are going to uh, focus on the next goal you are, that you are going to achieve. So perfection is a road and not a destination. Every time I live, I get an education. I learn something new. And it doesn't matter if we are like children, teenagers, uh, adults, um, we are going to learn something new every single day. So now after that, we are going to just make a little review of the five important things that we have about the simple past that we were reading in the last um, session. So we have the uses. We have five different uses for the simple past. We have the number one that it says completed action in the past. So we're going to use the simple past when we have a completed action in the past. And we are going to use it for expressing the idea that an action started and finished at a specific time in the past. Sometimes the speaker may not actually mention the specific time, but they don't have, they do have one specific in mind. So it is not necessary to uh, pronounce or say aloud the time in which that action uh, happened, but we know that the person have a, a specific time in which they perform that action in the past. Then we have number two, that is a series of completed actions. We are going to talk about uh, some action that we performed in the past, but there are like a list of things that we did. So in this case, we use the simple past to list a series of completed action in the past. This action happened first, second, third, fourth, and so on. So in that case, we are going to talk about action that has the same purpose in some cases, because we have like, um, and then number one, that is our maybe plans for a day. First, we are going to finish the work. Then we are going to walk on the beach. And the last thing that we are going to do is find a nice place to swim. So in that case, we are um, doing some actions that are like in order. So in that case, we are going to use a series of complete actions to talk about things that we did in the past. Then use number three, we are going to talk about the duration in the past. And in this case, we are going to use the simple past um, to talk about the
Teacher, no le escucho nada. I think now, ahora si lo pueden escuchar? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, teacher. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, I think it was a problem of the system because it doesn't find the, the sound. It has the, the microphone on, but it doesn't find the sound. And now that I change to my, my headphones, it, it, it is, it sounds right now. Thank you. So we are going to continue. If you are having trouble to listening to me, uh, you can tell me uh, anytime because I don't know if, what happened. So we are going to continue because we have like kind of minutes left. So in that case, we were talking about that. Uh, the youth number four was a uh, about talking in the uh, habits in the past in which um, we have that we need to describe 
things that we did in the past, but now we are not going to uh, do the same actions again. So in that case, we can use also like uh, the structure of the use. So in this case, we are not going to use the same phrase, but it is kind of the same thing. And we have some expressions that we can use that are always, often, usually, never, when I was a child, and when I was younger. We can use those expressions to talk about the action that we performed in the past, but now we are not going to do it again. Then we have the use number five, that is the last use that we are going to have for this um, simple past. And we have the past part or generalization. So in this case, we said that the simple past can also be used to describe past parts or generalization which are no longer true. So in that case, we're going to use it kind of the same with the number four, but in that case, it's talking about something general, something that is not going to happen again. Because we change that situation. So now we are going to talk about that is the last part of this uh, uh, simple past topic. So we have the part number two, and it's uh, some tips about this plan. So in this case, we are going to use the when. When clothes that happen first, that is one thing that we are going to use with the simple past. So in that case, it's something that we need to keep in mind about the uh, tense. So in this case, we are going to talk about when it closes. Happen first. So in this case, it says that process are groups of words which have meaning but are often not complete sentences. So in that case, it's a group of words that has not a complete uh, meaning as an sentence. So they are just a group of words. Some clauses begin with the word when, such as when I drop my pen or when class began. These clauses are called when clauses and they are very important. And we are going to see some examples. As we mean, but are often not complete. So in this case, we're talking about uh, this uh, group of words that we know as clauses. Um, 
In this case, when we have uh, this kind of long sentence, uh, we are using uh, these uh, kind of clauses because they contain uh, two hard sentences. Estamos utilizando estas cláusulas o que dice que son grupos de palabras que tienen un significado, sí, claro, tienen un significado, pero que no están completas. Siempre necesitan otra parte para complementarlas. Si las separamos, pues obviamente cada una va a tener su significado, pero no va a estar completamente finalizada. En este tipo de cláusulas vamos a utilizar las que comienzan con la palabra when. And we have two examples. When I drop my pen and when class began. Then we have the classes are called when clauses and they are very important. So, tenemos esto que se llama when clauses porque empiezan con esta palabra, ¿verdad? Con when. So, we are going to see some examples. And we have example number one. And it says, when I pay her one dollar, She answered my question. So in this case, we have two parts of the sentence. We have the clause that we are going to use with the word when, and we are going to have the other sentence. So in this case, we have two parts. And if I separate them, I have two different sentences. In the first one, I have. When I pay her one dollar, that is the first sentence. And then we have the another one that says, she answered my question. Tenemos dos frases en la misma. Cuando le pagué a ella un dólar, es mi primera oración. ¿Qué pasó? No sabemos. Porque no está completa. Pero sí sabemos que le pagó un dólar. Y tenemos la otra oración que dice, ella respondió mi pregunta. ¿Por qué respondió la pregunta? We don't know because we don't have the other part of the sentence. Entonces, estas oraciones son las que se complementan, pero que separadas pueden tener un significado. Incompleto, pero lo tienen. Example number two. That is like the same sentence, but in this case, we're going to change the order of the two sentences or the two phrases. And it says, she answered, my question when I pay her one dollar. So in that case, we are not going to um, use a sub one clause because in the last one, we have the complete sentence without a comma. So in that case, it is one sentence, just one sentence. But in the first one, uh, we have two separate sentences that can function as individual, but both of them uh, together have a complete meaning. So, when clauses are important because they always happen first, then both clauses are in the, past, in the simple past. What are the examples about me the same thing? First, I pay her one dollar and then she answer my question. It is not important whether when I pay her one dollar, it's at the beginning of the sentence or at the end of the sentence. However, the example below has the different meaning. First, she answered my question and then I pay her one dollar. So in this kind of explanation, we can see that it doesn't matter the position of the flow, but we can, um, like this reminds that there are like different meanings because we are changing the order of the structure. Entonces, sabemos que cuando vamos a utilizar el when clause, lo vamos a poner al inicio de la oración, ¿verdad? Ahí funciona como una cláusula. Básicamente la oración es lo mismo. Él tiene el, el, el mismo significado si nosotros lo, lo traducimos, o sea, hacemos la traducción. Pero eh, en la primera pregunta, bueno, en la primera oración, we are saying that we paid 
a dollar for something. But in the second one, we are saying that the person sell us something and then we pay. So, en la primera nosotros pagamos y después nos respondieron. Y en la segunda, primero nos respondieron y luego pagamos. It's the same, but it's just like for the position of the words or the position of the sentences. But it's the same meaning. It doesn't change much. So, then we have the advert placement. We're going to talk about in what place we're going to buy the advert. So we have the advert placement that we have uh, just an example to uh, notice in which place we are going to use the advert. That is like, we know that we need to write the subject, then the other, then the verb and the complement. So that is not something that we are going to um, talk about a long time. So we have the example. And we have example number one, and we have the subject. Then we have the other that is just. Then we have the verb uh, in past and the complement. And we have our sentence. Here just call Debbie. So in this case, we are going to place the other in the in the case that we are using the other in this kind of sentence. We are going to place the other um, next to the uh, subject. First the subject, then the, um, the other. And if we have a question, it's the same. We have the auxiliary that is the auxiliary did. Then we have the subject. Then we have the adverb. And then we have the verb that is in present or in base form. And then we have the complement. Did you just call Debbie? So in that case, we need to place the adverb between the subject and the verb. That is the place that we are going to use for this kind of adverb. And now we are going to talk about active and passive voice. Um, we're going to talk something about this kind of uh, information because in this case it is not like we are uh, just explaining everything about uh, the process of the active and passive voice. But in this case, because we are talking about the simple past, we are going to see something about the passive and active voice using it in the present, the simple past. So we are going to uh, hear some information about the, the passive and active voice with uh, this kind of verb. But it's not like we're going to talk about all the uses of passive and active voice. In the paper form. So it says that a sentence can be active or passive. Therefore, sentences also have active forms and passive forms. We are uh, going to learn something about this. Vamos a reconocer ¿verdad? cuando eh, los tiempos tienen estas formas activas y estas formas pasivas de lo que son los verbos, ¿verdad? Y vamos a hacer la diferencia entre activo y pasivo a la hora de hablar de los verbos.
So the first thing that we are going to see is the active form. So we have here active form. And we're going to mark this one in red. So this is the first information that we are going to uh, see. And it says in active sentences, the thing doing, the action is the subject of the sentence. And in the thing receiving, the action is the object. Most sentences are active. Entonces, cuando estamos utilizando la forma activa, eh, la cosa haciendo la acción es el sujeto. Quien realiza la acción es el sujeto. Um, y el que recibe la acción es el objeto. La mayoría de oraciones son activas. So, the thing doing the action is the subject. And the thing receiving the action is the object. So most of them are active because they use this active form because we have the subject that is doing the action and then we have the uh, object that is receiving that action from the, uh, the subject. So we have like, um, like a formula about this kind of active form. Then it says seeing, doing, Action plus the verb plus the thing receiving the action. And we have some examples. We have here the professor teacher. And in this case, we're not we're not using a um, simple past. In this case, we're just going to see in a present this example. The professor teaches the student. So in this case, this one that is the professor, we're going to say that is the subject doing the action. And we know that this one teaches if the verb or the action that the professor is doing. And the object of this sentence, or that is the one that is receiving the action are the students. So, in this case, tenemos el ejemplo, el profesor enseña a los estudiantes. Tenemos que el profesor es el que está haciendo la acción, porque él está aquí enseñando. Que esa enseñar es nuestra acción, nuestro verbo. Recordemos que los verbos son acciones que nosotros realizamos. Entonces, en este caso, el sujeto es el que está haciendo la acción, que la acción es enseñar es nuestro verbo y quienes reciben esa acción son los estudiantes que van a servir como el objeto de nuestra oración. So in that case, we have the professor that is the subject 
then cases that is the action, and then the students that are the object. So in this case, we have active sentence. Then we have another one. We have John washes the dishes. Again, we have that John is the subject. Doing the action. Then we have our verb that is was. In this case, was because we're applying the, the rule of the third person. That is the verb or action. And the dishes are the object receiving the action. So we're going to change this one, a different color because it will be kind of easier. So we have this one with this one. Like this. Then we have this and this. We're going to have this. So again, we have this one. Then we have green. And then we have yellow. So we have the two examples. So now we are going to talk about the passive form. So it says that in passive form sentence, the scene receiving the action is the subject of the sentence. And the thing doing the action is optionally included near the end of the sentence. You can use the passive form if you think that the thing receiving the action is more important or should be emphasized. You can also use the passive form if you do not know who is doing the action, or if you do not want to mention who is doing the action. So in this case, it's different because in this in this passive form, we have that the team receiving the action is the subject. En las oraciones pasivas, quien se convierte en el sujeto es eh, la cosa que está recibiendo la acción o la persona que recibe la acción se convierte en el sujeto principal de la oración y el sujeto o la cosa o la persona que está haciendo la oración no es eh, en muchos de los casos no es incluido en la oración porque eh, a veces queremos dar como uh, dejarlo como el misterio quien está realizando la, la, oración, la acción o no queremos mencionarlo o ya se puede prever según el contexto de la oración quién es el que hace la acción y no es tan importante y en el caso de que queramos darle más énfasis a el que recibe pues obviamente lo vamos a pasar a sujeto de nuestra oración So in this case, when you are not going to use, or, uh, so, no, in this case, when you are going to add the, uh, the thing or the person that is doing the action, you are going to grab it um, near the end, almost at the end of the sentence. It is on the start to put in the first 
place because in that place it's going to be the thing that is receiving the action. You can also use the passive. Warm. In this case, if we don't know who is the person doing the action, uh, we are not going to use it and it's okay because we are going to use the passive form. So in this case, we have this formula. We have a thing receiving the action plus B plus past participle of verb plus by plus thing doing action. So this one is longer than the uh, active uh, form. In this case, we have more elements that we are going to use for the active uh, form. So we have the example. So in this case, we have the students are taught by the professor. So in this case, we have the same sentence that we have in the active uh, form. But in this case, it's like we are putting the students at the beginning of the sentence. And we are changing the time of the verb. So in this case, we are using the past participle of the verb. So in this case, the students are the subject receiving the action. Then we have the verb be. This is we're going to say be. Then we have as participle of the verb by, and then we have doing action. And then we have the other example, and it says the dishes. are washed by John. So in this case, again, we have the, in this case, it's just the student. Here, the student, the action, 
Again, we have the verb to be, the past participle form of the verb, by, and then we have doing action. Then we have some uh, tenses or some examples that we are going to see with the different tenses that we have. We have simple present, present continuous, simple past, past continuous, present perfect, present perfect continuous, past perfect, past perfect continuous, simple future will, simple future be going to, uh, future continue, will, future continuous be going to, Future perfect will, a future perfect be going to. Then we have future perfect continuous with will. Future perfect continuous be going to, used to, will always, future in the past will. And the last one is future in the past was going to. So we have some structures or some senses in which we can use this passive and active form. So we are going to buy the senses and then we are going to buy the example in both um, ways, in the active and in the uh, passive. So let me see, we have, yes, I will uh, write the example and maybe in a couple of minutes, I will explain the exercise that we are going to have. In this case, we are going to um, the one the exercise is, I guess, tomorrow. So we have. I will write just this one. So we have here the tense. Then we have the active. Then the passive. I don't know why I have four of these. This is just me. I'm going to eliminate this kind of hard. So I'm going to let me see if I can. I can do it. Yes. We're going to have it like this. So we have the first one that is the simple person. When we have the assemble, we have once a week, some clean, the house. And for the passive, once a week, the house is cleaner. By Tom. Then we have the second one that is the present continuous. Then we have by now. Sarah. It's writing the letter. So in the passive one, it says right now, the letter is being written By Sarah. Then we have the simple past, that is the structure that we are using right now. 
simple past. And we have some repair the car. Some repair the car. And then we have the car was repaired by some. Something that we can notice in this kind of a structure is that when we are using the uh, structure, we are going to uh, use the like the the, the specific structure for that uh, thing. So in that case, we are going to use the um, the structure that we are needed to write the sentences. When we are using the passive, then we have the past continue. And we have the salesman. Was helping the customer. When the chief came into the store, so in the passive we have the customer was being helped. By the salesman, when the chief came into the store. Then we have present perfect. Many tourists have visited that castle. And the passage uh, is that castle. has been by many tourists. And the last one that I am going to write because I need to explain the two exercises that we are going to read because in that case we are going to read two um, things and we are going to do some actions or some things with uh, that uh, reading. Because uh, tomorrow we are going to say the answer for that exercise. So we have the present perfect continuous. And we have a recently. Um, John has been doing. The word. Again, recently, the word has been has been been gone by John. And just one more. That is the last one. That's perfect. Church has repaired many cars before he received. 
First mechanic lesson. Time for the factory. We have many cars has been repaired by George before he received. This mechanic so um I will write the other examples for this uh, table in which we are going to use the passive and active um, and you will find it in the document because there are kind of uh, many examples so in this case we are going to write just a 17 but there are like 25 i guess so you will find uh, the other examples in the document and now i will send to the group the two images that you are going to read for the exercise that we are going to perform tomorrow. So let me send the images and then I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with that images. So we have the first one, let me see. It's a reading about the cat and the orange. The cat and the orange. So in the first uh, part of the cat and the orange, you are going to read the passage and you are going to correct the verb that in the brackets um, and you are going to use the simple past tense. That is the first thing. But this image has a second part in which I have some uh, questions for you because you are going to read uh, the, um, we can say the, uh, the, the short story about the cat and the orange. So tomorrow we are going to read again the, uh, the story about the cat and the orange, but we are going to say the correct form of the verb. And then I will ask you the question about the story of the cat and the orange. This is the first one. And then we have another one that in this case, you are going to read this paragraph. It's a paragraph. And you're going to complete the paragraph with the right form of the verb in simple past tense. Again, you're going to use the simple past tense, but in this case, it's a paragraph about Harry Potter. So in that case, we are going to read tomorrow the paragraph about this story, and we are going to say the cover form of the verb, because we are using the simple past tense. So you have the two um, images in the group, the one with the cat and the orange, and the second one about the Harry Potter. So you're going to read them. And tomorrow we are going to say the correct form of the words, and also we are going to answer some questions about the presence of the documents that we have in the group. So, if you have time to read the paragraph uh, or the story, uh, you can do it tomorrow. It is not necessary that you are going to read everything today. We are going to uh, read it tomorrow, and then we are going to uh, do the um, the exercises. But we are going to have a Another exercise, in this case, we have the number one, that is the reading part in which we are going to read the cut of the orange and the paragraph about Harry Potter. And then we are going to have um, a, the second exercise that is completing some sentences that divided into regular and irregular verbs in past. 
So tomorrow we are going to have like some exercise that we are going to do about this topic. So now it's time to end the session. So we are going to have three more sessions this week to end this course. So now it's time to say goodbye. See you tomorrow and have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night.